making a sign, and this will be a little bit different than uh, a lot of the laser engraved signs I've done. This will be a laser cut sign, cutting out letters. So, the like H, for example, and uh, a couple of palm trees. Make a sign for over our hot tub, which will say Hot Tub Haven, stress free zone. And I'll take you on the computer here and show you how this is designed, and then we'll get back to what it's being made out of and how it's being cut. Okay, show you here how I am laying this out, uh, give, kind of give you an idea, and you can open this up to any laser you want because of uh, um, this is all cut out letters, so obviously the uh, laser here, I, I just grabbed the longer Ray 5 as a base to work with, and you don't have to do this in Lightburn, you can do it in, there's a plethora of other softwares you can use, you can do it in Inkscape, you could any graphics design you could do, but I'm doing it here in uh, Lightburn because I can create libraries for these letters. So what I've done here is, this is a toolpath. I've made and you wouldn't have to be a toolpath because we're not actually cutting this out this way but this is made to be the size of the uh, upper sign which is 35 wide by 10 inches high and this here is also a toolpath it'll be the lower part of the sign that will hang from hooks that is 35 wide and 5 inches high now from uh, I needed to get all my letters and everything fit in there so this uh, particular font happens to be called uh, pirate and so I, I just made out what I wanted to put in there of course this needs to be moved over a little bit to get it centered and then once I type that in and got all my letter size uh, the letters here on the upper sign will be three and a half inches tall and on the bottom sign here they will be three inches tall once I've done that, I have taken my letters and typed them just individually around on the screen and created an art library I just called Sign Letters for this project. And for each one of these, then I could click on that and I could go over here to Import Graphic from Project, call it something, of course this is A, and since it's already in there, it'll just like replace it while I can. So there's all my letters there. Uh, for my palm trees, and these are also going to be cutouts, I have a library of different palm tree uh, graphics here that I can choose from. And I've chosen this one here. And what I did for this side was I just went up here to this little guy and flipped it so it would go the other way. So now all I have to do is cut all these pieces out. But I just kind of wanted to show you how uh, this was designed. And again, you don't have to do a light burn. You can do it in all kinds of different software packages. But if you have Lightburn, this is a, a quick and easy way to do it. And you can create some libraries. And if you already have libraries, you can import graphics from those. So I hope that explains about how this was laid out and designed. Yes, there's some background noise because I have the laser running. And this is not a quiet laser. This is the uh, longer B1. And it's 40 watt. And the reason I'm using this is because this is the uh, laser I generally use when I'm cutting thicker material uh, because it has that 40 watt head on it. And the other reason is because it was already on the table from another project. So what am I making these letters out of? This is uh, cedar fence picket. We put an enclosure around our hot tub using cedar fence pickets, a couple hundred of them. And in places we had cutoffs. So I had a whole bunch of these cutoffs. Thought it'd be a good thing to use to uh, cut these letters out of and my palm trees uh, etc so for the back of the sign on the upper part I have two cut off pieces of fence picket and I have not run this through my planer yet because as I say this is nominal thickness and that means they are not all the same thickness or the same width but I did run these these two edges uh, on the joiner and then uh, edge glue them together. So that'll be the upper part of the sign after it goes through the planer. Now this here will be the lower part and it's going to attach to the upper part with a couple of little eyes and hooks so it'll kind of swing at the bottom in the wind. And this is where the stress-free zone uh, lettering will be. And again I'll run this through the planer too and clean it up. Uh, these pieces here are too short to run through the planer. 
So after I cut the letters out, I just sand them a little bit. It doesn't take much. Cedar's pretty soft. Uh, intend to paint the uh, backgrounds, and then we'll be painting the letters. I, it's up to the wife here what colors we're going to use. If we're going to use all one color, if we're going to go Caribbean, or if we're going to try to match the enclosure, match the house, match the neighbor's house. I don't know. We're going to match something or come up with something just uh, unique. Of course, the palm trees will be painted to look like palm trees. Green leaves, brown trunks, light brown for the little sand base. And I've got another one here cutting right now. I'll give you a kind of a close-up look at that, and then I'll talk about the settings. Another one of the uh, palm trees. These take quite a while to cut. There's a lot of uh, lines in it. And one thing I did find was uh, in one area, the leaf comes out to where it is so fragile right there, it just breaks right off. But I will either uh, make that little nub disappear or kind of leave it there and just paint it. And I'm sure the same thing will happen on this other one when it comes off the laser there that uh, is very, very narrow. So what am I using for settings here? This is uh, half inch nominal thickness Western Red Cedar. I am at 380 millimeters per minute at 100% power and four passes. Yes, it will do it in three most of the time, but I don't like it when that most of the time comes up and I have to get out the old knife here and cut away the part of the back that didn't cut through, so I want four passes. Here are a couple of things I know are going to come up. Why don't you have any protective eyewear on? Well, I'm not looking at the laser. If I was looking at the laser, then I put these on. But I'm looking at the camera, not the laser. And even though this does have a shield on it, and they kind of say you don't need to wear protective eyewear, you, you still should if you're looking at it. So just when I'm walking around the shop here, I don't walk around with these on all the time. Uh, people think I'm some kind of alien with bug eyes. It's, that's what I've been called a few times, and if you've never seen these on me, this is why I get the nickname of Bug Eyes, but uh, when I have these on, I have no problem looking directly at the laser. These are made for a blue light laser, 450 nanometers uh, wavelength, and these are orange, which is the opposite of blue, so it cancels it out. So what I see is a little bit of a white light. That's it. And everything else is orange. So that's why I don't wear these all the time because I'm not looking at the laser. Second thing that's going to come up is what about all the smoke? You know, uh, you're going to die from that. Well, I've got big overhead doors on the shop and they're wide open and there's a fan behind me blowing because it's hot. It's like 90 some degrees. So the fan not only keeps me from being all moist. I know people don't like that word. And it also blows the smoke out of here, so I don't even smell this. So there's the two things I know are going to come up because they always do. So what about materials? Do you have to make these out of uh, Cedar Friends pickers? No, you don't. Of course not. Uh, you can use uh, just about anything you want to, depending on where the location is going to be. If you're going to be using it outdoors, you need something that is uh, made for that. So let's say you wanted to use uh, quarter inch plywood, you'd have to make sure it was an exterior glue plywood and it was made to be used outdoors. Even though it's still going to paint it, it needs to have an exterior glue. I'm using uh, cedar because obviously I had all these scraps, but also because it weathers very, very well, it takes paint very, very well, and it's very easy to work with. Uh, the half inch thickness will give a, a pretty stout relief when it's on the uh, back, lighter background of the uh, back of the signboard, so that's why I'm using this second material. I could have uh, planed this down to quarter inch, although not these little pieces, they won't fit in the planer. But I have uh, more scraps out there, and Cedar France pickets are not that expensive. If I need to go buy some more, I could do that. Now, as far as my letters go and using these scraps up, uh, some pieces were clear enough I could do three letters in one little scrap. Uh, some of them are not. For example, this one here has a knot right in the middle. I either need to make sure that knot falls like in the center of an O or someplace, something like that, but the uh, other sides of it are clear. You don't want to try to cut through a knot because it will, but it won't. 
Uh, you, you know, the four passes, it, yeah, it'll make the four passes and it'll cut everything else out except where it goes across that knot because it's harder and more dense. So there's something to think about if you're uh, using this type of material and you're trying to do your layout. This is an example here of where I avoided the knot. So you got a big old knot up there, but everything down here was pretty much clear. There was a little bit of a knot there. I just scooted the uh, graphic over a little bit so it would miss it. Because you can really get into a fit if your uh, cut happens to go through a knot. There's my completed palm tree there. Now before I take this out of the board, I will sand that. It's a lot easier to sand before you uh, take it out. So there are my two opposing palm trees. We'll just need to get painted. And of course the little uh, leaf thing broke off of that one too. So I think I'm going to leave them as they are because they match. And I'll just paint that.
So there's the almost complete sign. It only has one uh, tack coat of uh, uh, spar urethane on it right now. It'll get four coats before we actually go and put this up. I'll kind of give you an idea there of what it looks like. Um, it'll be much glossier than that once we get uh, some more coats on it. But that's going to take a day or two. Okay, so got it complete and everything. So I'm holding the microphone because I am soaking wet. It, it's hot. I do mean hot. And if I turn the fan on, then it makes a bunch of noise. But as soon as I get done here, that fan will be back on. It'll also help the uh, urethane dry on my sign here. So one of the things uh, I know I'm going to get a comment on is, well, you can go to the hobby store, you can buy these letters. Well, sure you can. But you're restricted to certain fonts and you're restricted to certain sizes. And when you make them on your laser, you make them any size and font you want. So in this case, uh, the, this font was called Pirate. Um, I did purchase it. Uh, don't remember where. But I happen to like this particular font. It wasn't expensive. It's true type font. Um, installs very easily. And it, it works out just fine here as you can see. So this is uh, to give you an idea of what you can do with your laser to uh, make a different type of sign rather than just laser engraved you can actually cut out the letters and then put them on top and you could do this in multiple layers with things if you wanted to get really fancy but it's hot and I didn't want to and this uh, will fill the bill for what we want to use it for so there won't be any files to download on this project here because you're gonna uh, unless you want this particular sign if you do send me an email and I'll send you the light burn file for this sign but otherwise you're probably going to make one that says something different you're going to be using different letters and probably a different font so again this is just to give you an idea how to do it uh, in the laser I was using was a longer B1 uh, it's a 40 watt I like to use that when I'm cutting thicker material uh, this ha this is a uh, half inch nominal thick cedar so actually it was about 5 8 uh, because I, I didn't plane it when I, my cutoff pieces were too short to run through the planer otherwise I would have taken them down a half inch and smoothed them out but I did sand them after they were cut out so if you got anything out of this appreciate getting a thumbs up always helps the channel Roger in the shop thanks for watching see you in the next one